Hello fellow planters. So the other day I planted this neon pothos in a pot using a PVC pipe cap with three smaller PVC pipe caps as legs. And today I'm going to be showing you, or in this video, it may take me a few days to make, it's kind of late at night and I do need to get some sleep sometime. But I'm going to use um, this mic stand and as a hook and I'm going to make a macrame uh, PVC pipe cap hanger using a bigger one. And I bought this a few years ago along with the one I just showed you and I never did anything with this yet. But when you buy these, so many of them, you know, coming from a plumbing section are scuffed up. So you want to cherry pick one that's pretty tidy, you know, and if it has labels printed on here versus a sticker, this one had a like barcode that was sticker. So I was able to use Goo Gone and remove. But if you do have a label with there, that's not good. You want to have it somewhere which isn't very visible because they don't come off easily. And if you use acetone, it will remove the sheen. So that is something to consider when choosing the right end cap to make a pot, unless you use a regular pot for a macrame plant hanger. So to begin, I have some rings and these are like from the leather working section at Michael's and most people when they make macrame pot hangers, they use wooden rings. The wooden rings are a little less expensive, but not by much. And the metal ones actually, to me, are stronger. And I'm gonna incorporate three rings into my design that I have up here. I didn't even put it on paper. So I have a smaller ring and two bigger rings. Now, from the top, I'm gonna to use a smaller ring and as you can see, if I hang it on here, well, here I have the thread where the microphone holder would screw into. And I could use this to clamp this in nice and tight, but this is kind of thick. And if I, if I remove this piece and put it on the other side, it's gonna slide down, especially if I have to angle this up as I work my way down. So to remedy that, I'm gonna use one of these clothes hangers. So you clamp it this way and I make sure it's gonna be tight enough. I could always apply other clamps here if I find it gonna fall down. So then I can put the ring I want and adjust the height. So now another thing I need to consider is because this ring is smaller than these two, what thickness thread do I want? Or how many strands of thread if I'm using thicker thread? So that is what we're gonna consider next. So to make macrame, you can have different types of cordage to your disposal. And for smaller ones, you can use thinner cords like this cheap twine you can get from Walmart, a jute cord that's thin but very messy. If you saw my video on a like you know, I use small pots and I put like four tiers in there. Or was it five? I can't remember. I, I made it and I haven't even hung it. I have it tucked away somewhere. So then it, um, I don't want to make a mess down here. Let's see. So then you have this macrame cord that's thinner and nice and tidy. And then you have this other kind, which is a little ropier. It looks more like rope than that one, but it's a little thicker if you see that there. So um, this one would probably work better through that than the thicker one. I haven't opened this yet. I guess I could tear the plastic, but I kind of like this against the pipe cap. So if you look at this cord at the color, it's kind of a like really tan color and the pipe cap is really white. So then if you look at this cord, it's a little lighter in color. I really want a bright white. I guess I could always bleach it, but I'd probably just use this with this and then with the antique bronze finish of this. I wish I wish you had a real bronze finish versus like a fake simulation. I don't know why they do that, but that's what they had in stores. It might uh, go better, you know? So if I could find stainless steel ones like that, that would be sweet. So anyway, um, so I think I'm gonna go ahead with this kind of cordage. And I have two of these spools just in case this one's not long enough because this one is 21 and a half meters long, 
whereas this one here is 45.7 meters. So as you can see, the one, this one is not quite as long, so I have a couple spools just to be safe. Plus this one is already used and not the full length. And I thought I bought one of these extras. I couldn't find it. Maybe I didn't, and maybe I was like, oh, I'll just buy it later. So anyway, I'm gonna use this and let's get started. So I went ahead and pulled this cord out so I can get you guys a better representation of the thickness. And it is a lot thicker than I thought. So I'm like, wow. But for my purpose for this project, I do think this does look better, although I've never used that cord before. You know, I've made them out of this, out of the really thin twine, but this is, you know, PVC tends to be a little heavy and when you have something hanging, you wanna make sure you're using something substantial. So that's why these two are better. This one is really good cord, but it's nice and clean, you know, whereas this one probably looks a little more rustic with the twists and everything. Anyway, what I need to do next is assess length. How long do I want it? Now, I'm going to have this ring to the hook and then another ring underneath. So what I'm doing is measuring, if I have this here, that's about eight inches and that visually looks like a good height which means I'm gonna to have to have it twice as long or I'm gonna do 26 just to be on the safer side. Before I'm, I know it, I'm gonna be out of thread, lovely. Okay, so 26 inches times four. Wow, look how long that is. And I cut four when I just needed two, how stupid of me. I'm gonna run this through here like that. And then run this, the next one, through the other side the same way. There are plenty of videos which show you how to do it this way. So, um, so if you didn't quite get it, um, you can always watch because I watched two or three macrame videos, followed the way they did them. And then I realized, oh, it's so easy. I can make my own. So now that we have these, this like that, I can put one, two, three, four, like that. And that's gonna work beautifully. So I'm actually gonna put the knot from the outside in. Okay, I got that just right. Now I hope I get this one just right. And I did. Okay, good. So now we're in business. Now before I deal with these strands, since I'm doing four and four, I'm going to put, I need eight cords. So now that one has a little tension, but that's fine. I need eight cords and I need to figure out how long to make it. Now I need to figure out how high is this going to be? Am I going to have it that way? Or am I going to have this like that? I kind of like the longer look. So if I do that, I need probably about three times as long from here to here with enough strand to go underneath. So when you look at this from here to here, we're talking, um, this is about two feet. So I need six feet times two. So that's 12 plus another foot, um, 13, 14. So I need at least 14 feet, um, I'll probably do 16 to be safe, 16 times 8, so 80, 90, so I need about 130 feet remaining, and this was 23 yard, so this is about 80 feet. Fortunately, I have a second one of these. Okay, so I'm going to measure four pieces, 16 feet long, and then we'll work our magic. 
Okay, so I have eight pieces. They're around 16 feet long. Hopefully that wasn't too long and hopefully it wasn't too short. I don't want to waste or be stuck with too little. Now I do, well, first of all, let me get the string on here before I adjust the height. So you want to grab the two ends and if you put your finger be between them to prevent twisting, you know, you can get to the middle. And so I'm going to stick it under here, run the loop through and then holding this so I can maintain the center. Whoops, I'm stepping on it. Pull, pull it through and then tie. So what I'm going to do is I have eight strings. I'm going to put two between each of these knots. I need to adjust the height. So let me get that taken care of. Let me tell you, a mic stand with a clove hanger makes a really, really good holder for your macrame. Now what I may do is I have these extra strands I am going to tie a few just to make sure this doesn't come loose and hit me upside my head. Although some people think that might actually help things up there. But um, it might help them up there, not me. You know, when you're a genius, you're a genius. What can I say? Okay, so now that I've uh, given you some bias, well, is it bias if it's true? Anyway. We'll go ahead and commence with the completion. So I'm just pulling these through to make sure they're tight. And the question is, do I want a little bit of length before I start knotting? And do I want a square knot, a half square knot? The choices are endless. But I like the fact that the square knot is symmetrical with a half square. You do it one way or the other, it's going to twist in a different way. And I don't really like that too much on the macrame. So for the square knot, I'm going to take the two that are opposing that just to have this tight. You know, I want this whole thing to be nice and tight. And then you can't really see the ring. So I guess there was no point for the antique finish on these anyway. So uh, let's see, I'm going to do a square knot and uh, whoa, you know, it helps to pull from the bottom and then you run it again like an L, tuck it in, the two strands in the middle out, the two there. So you're doing just an opposite. So you, you know, I did the first one the other way, and now this one this way. There are plenty of videos on doing square knots, so um, I don't feel like I need to explain them here, because if you watch several macrame videos, it gets redundant hearing the same directions over and over and over and over by so many different people. So you don't really need to know all that, you know? Or you don't need to learn it repeatedly. So I got one square knot and I'm going to go ahead and get the rest just on the top. Now that I have all of them at the top done, you know, the first row, if I were to alternate, I'm going to create a tube. I don't want a tube in this case. You know, I've done that in some of my other, well, my other earlier macrame video. And I've done that for a couple macrame projects. But here what I'm going to do is stay the ones I've done Already, I'm just going to follow down. Now, keep in mind, you're only working with the outer ones for the square, so the central ones are going to be longer. And that's something you could consider if you, when you loop them over, you make one side shorter than the other, and you know which one's going to be on the outside versus inside. And this way, you can save on string. But I didn't do that. I had, you know, two rolls are plenty. I have all these scraps and these as well so hopefully that should suffice as i do the finishing knots when i'm done so i'm going to go ahead and run the string till about here to put the pot well the cap that will become a pot
So I've gone a few segments. I could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've done about ten, you know, on these, so 40 square knot knots. And I was planning on continuing all the way down. But I'm like, since I'm using four versus three and this is really thick, I will say it is nice working with a thicker cable though. And while I was working on this, I came up with another idea for this versus what I initially had envisioned. But anyway, I could continue to wear, you know, this pot square knots all the way down here, which would make the outer, uh, let's see, the outer strings that I'm tying into a knot a lot shorter compared to the inner strings. So let me show you for an example. See how 10 has made this over a foot shorter? If I do th this all the way to the cap, which means I need about 30, it would be a lot shorter. And then I'd be really pushing it. I could do it down to here and just have this all the way through. One thing that you can do to conserve string in this case is stop at a point, then come down lower and run a square knot at a lower height and then make the same length or not, depending on what you like. So you could run a square knot this way. You know, then you have to worry about getting the tension right. And it actually kind of looks nice. But, you know, that's the tricky part is getting all the tension right. And because this will be heavy, you know, it's going to pull and look good. But the question is, do I want something like that? I could even do a square knot in between. And that's what a lot of people do versus this all the way through. And will this look very bulky all the way through? But it will be a little less wide. So then will this be that far down this would be too tall I probably need this about there so I could do a square knot here and then continue here another 10 segments if I wanted to just to give something in the middle versus just a, a whole band it's all in what you want to do in the look you're trying to achieve so you don't have to follow a certain criteria to the T from what you've watched other people do when you make these designs, but you get to modify them at your own discretion, especially since the pot you may envision may be a different size or something. Whoa. So anyway, the question is, do I want this to continue as a long loop? And that is a good question. I think I might make a little gap because it would make it look a little stylish and be a little less work and not only that, but it will help me conserve string. But that actually does give it a little bit of more character, if you ask me, and doesn't make it so cluttered. So I was initially going to do this the whole way through, but I think I'm going to do that motif. Hopefully I'm doing the right thing and it's going to look awesome. But we'll find out. That's going to look great because I'm doing it, you know. As I went down, I had to keep raising this up. So I have 10 square knots, two square knots, 10 more. In hindsight, five may have, eh, I don't know. So now I have this thing. I'm gonna have these come up to there. I'm impressed that that hook thing on my um, thing has actually worked. So two and five eighths is right over here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just kidding. You know how I'm a perfectionist, and sometimes when you do things that you've never done before, it may not be perfect, and then you seek therapy. And let me tell you, therapy is expensive. So make sure you subscribe so I can actually get the therapy I need. So now if I run this about quarter 
I still want it a little bit shorter because I want it to really be butt up to the end, not hanging down because I want to do a whole ring versus, well, you know what? I think that's going to be okay. What do you guys think? Okay. I guess if you guys find this therapeutic, you could consider me the Bob Ross of macrame. <laughs> it's quote Alf, I kill me. And now the last one. But not the least one, right? So here we have it, and it's a little bit on the small side. It's always good to put it in from the upper end reaches. You see, that's not how I wanted it. Now I have like a little skirt. I wanted it a little lower, although that doesn't look too bad from there, does it? Except that's long and that there is short. So now I can complete the knot. Or, you know, with math completing the square. I never really understood that thing in math class back in high school. Mm. I don't know how much you can remember from... I won't say how long ago. I am older than I look. But if you ladies are looking for an older guy, mm. he's charming. I am still single. Any suitors out there? And there we have it. It works. So it is nice and snug. Not overly tight, but not way too loose. So now I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. Or I should do a 10 to there. That might. I might do that actually, do 10. I was gonna do five and then you could get fancier, but I'm just gonna do groupings of 10. So here I have two. Okay, let me go ahead and do the 10. And then I'll show you how we get the bottom section finessed up. And then we'll work on the top and we'll be done. And then you get to go watch someone else's tacky videos or more of mine you know if you're if you're glutton for punishment or um, you just uh, you know enjoy pain and want the full experience or you have the hots for me you're just watching me for that so i went down and stopped at uh, one two three four five and i was initially going to do 10 more and have this wrap around to the bottom but I think maybe even five may be too much. So let me show you what I did. So if I put these in here and I go down enough, you know, let me grab these there. You know, I can get this look here, which um, like that, but it occurred to me, if I have this come like that, I think it looks a lot nicer, you know? So, so then this is cradled, not going anywhere. And I have these coming out the side, so you have more of the white appearing. Doesn't that look nicer than this? Yeah, they both look about right good, but let me look at it from down here. You have that, and then you have that. Uh, it's just, it doesn't matter, does it? But this way is a little tidier. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, I'm just going to get the bottom done. And then how it turns out, it turns out because I can't make my decision. That's where this comes in. I'm going to loop these in here. Oopsie. Put that in there. If you notice how much I have left, I have enough for a tassel and a couple extra feet, so 
I could have actually made it two feet shorter and had when I looped the top pieces, one section, two feet um, shorter than the other versus equal lengths. That's a trick you could do to minimize wasting of string. Because now I have so many short segments and not enough plants to do a wicking or area to put plants for a wicking setup. So that kind of looks nice, doesn't it? It's my own uh, concoction. So now let's see how this looks. And this hanger is starting to slide down, but that doesn't look too bad. And it could sag a little over time. So I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna secure this with a finishing knot or a, uh, uh, what is the word? What is a good word for it? A wrapping knot. I'm not gonna pull this in too far because I want it to make sure it's tight. And if I pull it in too far, it could go past the loop and not be as stable. So by holding this, okay, it's not going anywhere. That's good, I got this tight. And I guess that is a good um, configuration. At least I'm gonna have to go with that, right? So let's see. See how close I can get without cutting any other strings. And then cut the frizzle. We have all this extra waste. But we have this, I could go to here and just have the tassel go all the way up there. I could do a short tassel. I have a choices. While I debate the tassel, I can actually do the moment you guys are looking for. Whoa. Can use my head. Okay. In hindsight, I should have done that first, but come to think of it, I could just take this out. And here's what I'm going to do. First things first, I'm going to do four small wrapping knots. Sometimes these um, small ones that you do to cover knots can be a little tricky to get to look pretty. I used one of my dullest pair of scissors, about as dull as you. Of course, you're thinking as dull as me. Am I really dull? Seriously. You've sat through this video this long. Either in pity or comic relief. Okay, so we have this uh, taken care of. The trick to a good wrapping knot is equal tension all the way around. It's easier to get tighter because when you start, you may not have enough slack and that becomes a uh, problem. But this gives me enough width here and there to look symmetrical. So now I can pull. So now we have this. We need to figure out the bottom. I think I'm just gonna cut it and then just let it fray all the way up there. I'm fine with that. Well. Wow. Actually, was able to cut those with these scissors. It's a miracle. So you see, now I can just trim the excess. So here you guys have it. The macrame hanger, and these I can just fray and just make them, you know, nice and frizzle the whole way up, just for effect and contrast against the nice um, nodding 
you know, the expertise of my knotting skills and abilities. But let's just get this mounted without uh, killing myself and I'll show you the final result. So we have the hook. That top loop is a little loose, but anyway, we have the hoop. We have the pot, then we have the uh, fuzz. I'll probably tweak this a little bit with sharper scissors. And imagine this hanging and nice pothos or other vine dangling underneath. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and happy planting.